Laney. We're here at uh, DEMA at the Historical Diamond Society booth. And Leslie, tell me about uh, yourself, the man behind historical diving. Well, I was born in uh, England, uh, learned to dive in Singapore, uh, became a branch diving officer for the British South Aqua Club uh, in the early 70s, uh, dove Mediterranean, English Channel, Red Sea, Malaysia, Indian Ocean, more dives, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, then came over to America in the uh, very late 70s, in 79, uh, based in uh, Malibu which is a lot more surfing than diving, but I didn't surf. Uh, and I worked in the entertainment industry for up until about 1990. Now, I did some diving during that time, but um, by 1990, I had uh, had an interest in diving history, and I would collected a lot of old equipment, and then they started to build a, a diving library. And uh, a gentleman I was working with in Australia told me about a group that was being formed in England, he wasn't quite sure what it was, but he put me in contact with the uh, address he had, and it turned out to be the beginning of the original Historical Diving Society, which was formed in England in 1990. Uh, I was their first American-based member, and so they eventually, because I think I was English and living in America, they asked me to uh, form a chapter over here, which I did uh, with another gentleman called Skip Dunham from Dive Systems International. And that chapter uh, evolved into its own nonprofit. And uh, in 19, 1994, the HDS USA became a, a nonprofit here, and we've grown uh, from that time. Uh, we started with about our first meeting had, I think, maybe 30 members there, and now we have, I think, just about 2,037 different countries. Wow. And. Uh, Stayed in Southern California, uh, moved from Malibu down into Santa Monica, another beach community, and from Santa Monica back up to Malibu and uh, then to Santa Barbara, which is where the society was founded. Well, you know, um, tell me a little bit about what you all are doing here with this historical diving society here at DEMA. What y'all? Is that, is that, is that a, <laughs> an American interviewer's word, y'all? You uh, bet. Okay. <laughs> Well, what we're doing here is, this is one of our uh, major profiles in the industry. It's the largest dive show in the world. Uh, we are a DEMA member, and uh, we come here primarily to recruit members and to try and raise funds for the programs we have. Um, what we do do inside the society, which is the, uh, the cement that sort of keeps the membership together, is we produce Historical Diver magazine. And... Um, because of the size of America, we have a regional conference that is sort of the same distance from London to Moscow as it is from Santa Barbara to New York. And so it's very difficult to get a membership base that all accumulates together. Uh, so we do regional conferences and we promote those here. We have flyers here that promote the conference, which is uh, next weekend in Tarpon Springs with the support of the city of Tarpon Springs. It's the first time we've we'll been there, which is the home of the uh, original American sponge divers that came from Greece 100 years ago, it's the centennial. So maybe you should come down to that because there's some really interesting things going to go on there. That's next weekend. And we use our uh, US Navy Mark V here, which uh, is built for us uh, as a fundraiser. And we sell fundraising tickets and that helps support the, our educational programs. And so um, that's kind of what we do here. There are many other things. We have a lot, a lot of books. We're an educational nonprofit, so we have books on diving history. Uh, we have a lot of back issues of our magazine, and we do sell some membership oriented uh, apparel. Well, since you are very obviously familiar with many aspects of the history in diving, there's been some controversy lately as to whether there's actually a decline uh, in the dive industry. Uh, what thoughts do you have on that? Um, we don't really monitor uh, what currently goes on very well. We spend most of our time going backwards uh, and trying to record the history. We're the, the largest uh, dive history organization in the world membership-wise. Uh, we don't have a museum. And so um, we have varying reports. We see that sometimes the trade shows are a little slower, sometimes they're a little, a little busier. We support the ones we can. Um, whether there's a decline in the industry, we wouldn't be the right people to uh, ask that question. Some shows do seem slower than others, so if that's an indication of decline, possibly. But 
we don't, I don't personally have a valid opinion on whether there's a decline. However, I can give you a list of my board of directors and they all have very good opinions, I'm sure. Um, I think possibly now, uh, I started diving in 1969. Uh, the amount of equipment and the, uh, the development of that equipment and also the boom in uh, dive tourism. Um, besides working for the Historical Society, I'm on the Board of Governors of the Cayman Islands International Diving Hall of Fame. And we're orienting, orienting that more towards dive tourism than uh, the Jacques Cousteau's and the Hans Hasses and, uh, and the, the general people get, get awards. And that's a major factor that has changed, that diving has gone from being a local sport now it's destination oriented. As you can see at this show, there's, there's aisles for different destinations, Caymans, Bahamas, Australia. Um, that never used to exist. And so the, the, the changes are there that it's become more of a tourist oriented uh, sport, a destination sport. Um, that then competes dollar wise with skiing, snowboarding, other uh, mountain biking other sports so you don't have to spend time getting a license to do. Well, we get to experience the juxtaposition of history and modern uh, equipment. Yes, true. <laughs> and it's, uh, well, uh, at this booth, yeah, because it's a lot of, everyone here is promoting the future, or the current and the future, and we're one of the few. And George Bass is here with his archaeological group. Pardon me that are promoting the past. So, although we do have a thing that's like Back to the Future, would you like to see it? Sure. So, and this is Aqualine, this is not a promotion of Aqualine, it's just a fact. <laughs> yeah. And they now have a current product that is a two-hose regulator. That's right. So it's it? Back to the Future. Yes. No, Rocky has tried it. One of the, the associate editor of the magazine. Does he think it's just as uh, good as the old ones or, uh, or better? I, I think he's sort of in, in between at this time because he's, he collects the old stuff and he's aficionado of that. But I, he's thrilled to see it, I know. Like, so it is a bit of back to the future. Well, we wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for the history that preceded Correct. us. And so I think that it's important for us all to remember that as we appreciate our history, we can also appreciate our present. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a message that is sometimes difficult to get through in a, uh, this industry. Um, I try to look at, when we're raising funds beside an individual member, look at what a corporate culture might be for a manufacturer such as an Aqualung or an Oceanic or a body glove uh, that has been around for some time and try to appeal to their, let's say, paternal instincts. And do you have a child at school? Do they study history? Is the Civil War of importance to you? Is World War II? Yes, there was historical events. Well, we now have a very young industry, a baby industry that's 50 years old. And what are we doing to preserve this history? Most of the uh, pioneers, the first wave, if you will, from the late 40s to the mid 50s, have, have gone. Most of them have gone. There are some left, but not many. And so uh, their stories are gone unless they were recorded, and a lot of them weren't. So what we're trying to do is catch what we can before it's too late, but we need the industry to support it, much as a parent would support its child. Sometimes we feel like we're a pretty good kid, and sometimes we feel like an orphan because we don't get the support we feel, we know we need, and we feel that uh, perhaps industry should, should provide. But not an unusual situation for a non-profit to be in. We're very interested in preserving uh, this and hoping to be able to record more of the oral histories because it's those things that I think we can really treasure as time goes on. Yeah, certainly there's enough characters. There are still some left. Um, the original Mediterranean trio of Cousteau, Dumas, and Payers that were passed on. But Hans Hass is still alive. Hans was diving in the Mediterranean in 1937 and was diving in the Caribbean in 1939 and was scuba diving in the Aegean in 1942, if my memory is correct. 
That's a year before Cousteau, well actually Cousteau met Gagne in the end of 42, but he scooped it open with fins and an oxygen rebreather, filming sharks and doing those things in, in, uh, in 1942. He is still alive and very articulate and uh, reasonably mobile, so we do a lot, of, a lot of promotion of what Hans has done through his books and films, hopefully that if there's anything that hasn't been recorded about him, we can catch, and he will be coming to the Beneath the Sea show in uh, New Jersey, New York, New Jersey, in March 2006. With his wife, Lottie, who we consider to be the first female scuba diver. She started diving with hands in 1949, I think. First woman to dive the Red Sea, as he was the first diver to dive the Red Sea. Can you tell us an interesting scuba experience that you've had? Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> some pretty alarming experiences at some of these award ceremonies and trying to fundraise. Um, most of my diving these days, I did do a lot of diving uh, in the late 60s and early 70s through, the, through that time, but since I've been involved with the society, a lot of my stuff is doing things like this, wearing helmets and uh, going down and uh, sort of trying to, besides the personal experience, is, is to promote it. And we have a lot of different groups that, that do that. Um, I'm trying to think of an inch. <laughs> There's some pretty interesting boat stories off of Malaya in 1970, but uh, uh, he sort of caught me off guard a little bit here. <laughs> I'd have to be Maybe we can revisit that. I'd have to look at some dive logs. Okay. Well, maybe we can visit you next weekend and hear something more then. <laughs> uh, if you were able to get down to, we were being, I'll be in Caymans with the Board of Governors and the International Scuba Diving Hall of Fame, and we are inducting uh, four new inductees there, and then uh, from there, uh, Tom Ingram and I are going to take a day off from our non-profit nightmares, his Dima, mine HDS, and we're going to go diving. And then when we finish diving, he comes back to California and I go on to do the HDS conference at Tarpon Springs. So, if you could make it down there, there's a lot of history. Thank you very much, Leslie. You're welcome. Thank you. Please, uh, please partake. Thank you.